Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemo. You can follow me on Facebook at Daniel Ross Goodemo uh, on Facebook. Uh, John Lundowski over there. Uh, just type his name like it's spelled on the screen. You can find him. Uh, you can also go over and check out our sponsor, uh, Hockey Locker. Uh, Hockey Locker, if you have any questions, you can call them at 404 800 7585. Or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They will outfit you with all your hockey needs. If you go into their store, Milos will take good care of you. They even have a drop box. If you need your sharp skates sharpened, they will. You have, they have an overnight drop box. You drop your skates off, they will call and leave uh, some contact info. They will call you when you're done. Pay for them when you pick them up. Yeah. So uh, with that being said. Uh, um, you can also follow us on Twitter from Milwaukee to Nashville on Twitter or from Milwaukee to Nashville co-host on Twitter, which is run by John. Yep. And also follow us on Instagram at from Milwaukee to Nashville. So <laughs> <laughs> enough with saying our name. <laughs> um, we're here to do a breakdown. Breakdown of who? Well, not the Minnesota Duck, but the Anaheim Duck. Would be cool to do the Minnesota Ducks mm-hmm. had we known properly. What? How'd they get that? Okay. Anywho, um, the Ducks are in a weird spot. They're not. Their roster's kind of old, but it's not too old. Right. Where they couldn't be competitive. It's it's kind of like a, that weird, goofy situation where you can't be successful because your team, it, it, it's just weird. For them. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how they do next year. I think that next year may be a better, better year for them. Um, off the jump, their head coach is Dallas Eakins. Dallas Eakins' um, staff record, he was named the coach in 2019. He was the head coach of 20, named the head coach of the San Diego Gulls. So he went through the system. He was the head coach at Edmonton, the Toronto Barleys. Assistant coach of the Maple Leafs and assistant coach of the Marlins. Which is kind of weird. You go from being assistant coach of the Leafs back to being a head coach in the AHL, right. to being a head coach in the NHL, to being fired, to being a head coach in the AHL, to being a head coach in the NHL. And he's kind of had one of those weird, goofy careers. Right. You know, um, Overall, as far as a player, he's played for, oh, he played for the Wolves in the eye. And the A. And his last season, he was the captain of the Manitoba Moose in the A. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, He also played for the Calgary Flames, the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Islanders, the Florida Panthers, New York Rangers, Phoenix Coyotes, St. Louis Blues, Panthers, Panthers, um, the Winnipeg Jets in 92, 93. Uh, he played his. Uh, the first years of his career with the Moncton Hawks, which are now in the juniors, um, and the Baltimore, what is that? Skipjacks. Not like playing uh, marbles. <laughs> just, just curious. You know, you play marbles with Jack. I'm showing my age a little here, but <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I've played for a very iconic uh, junior team, uh, the uh, Petersburg, who are still around. Um, so, uh, their head coach has a good playing career, but not so much on that. Well, I mean, he was playing when the Ducks first entered the league as well. Yes. Never played 93. For the, never played for the Ducks. Uh, the development coach is, uh, Francis Brocheman. 
and their director of uh, player development is Todd Marshman, Martian. So they got some stuff in there that they should be pretty good to go. Um, right. I, I think that after this year's pick, depending on what they pick up and if he comes over right away, um, they do have $22.5 million in cap open. Uh, they do have to sign their captain, Gatslav. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six RFAs, and one more UFA, which is David Backus, which I don't see them re-signing him. Nice. Uh, Bacchus is 37 years old, just not worth what he would be get, want to get paid. Uh, Ken Fowler, you still got him. John Mason, you still got him. You got Kevin Shattenkirk. You got yeah. Hayden Flurry in a trade that I thought was lopsided to begin with. Um, the Hayden Flurry for uh, uh, Yakimpa. Uh, right. Flurry coming from uh, the uh, Hurricanes and Hakimpa going back. Um, I don't think Hockenpah was worth Hayden Flurry. I think Flurry's young and still has upside. He was just stuck because they are deep defensively. Um, they also have Jacob Larson, and they could re-sign Andy Walensky, but they could also make a play for somebody in free agency. Now, right. one of the, the big changes for the Ducks is losing Ryan Miller. Ryan Miller has retired, and to me, is a Sabres fan. And as an American, Ryan Miller is probably one of the best American goalies I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. um, their IR, uh, they do have Ryan Kessler, Hempus Lindholm, and Sonny uh, Milano. Uh, Milano will be a good force to be reckoned with. Uh, Hempus Lindholm is a good defenseman. Ryan Kessler is past his prime. Um, Carter uh, Brownie will be, he'll be let go. Uh, they are still paying Corey Perry two million. No. They're left with uh, twenty-two million in cap space. They also have Trevor Seagrass coming up, as well as Jacob Perot. Um, that gives them a little bit of room uh, to to be able to be competitive. Um, right. They also have Jamie Drysdale, who is also young. He's nineteen and NHL ready. He will be ready to be competitive, as well as Brandon Goulet. Um, right. They have some pieces there. Uh, Lucas uh, Dostal and uh, Ali Erickson Eck will be their future in the net eventually. Um, I think that that will be good for them. As far as everything else, they have one first, one second, one third, one fourth, two fifths this year. A sixth yeah. and no seventh. Their reserve list, they have to sign Garrett Metcalf to uh, by August 15th. Um, highly yeah. unlikely they do that. Garrett Metcalf is a 25-year-old goalie who is currently has not played in the American style game. Oh, he has. He played this year for the Utah Grizzlies nine games, 2.33 goals against average with a point nine one five. Yeah, um, he is also. Um, am I reading this right? Yeah, he is also a former Madison Capital. Huh. Team owned by uh, the Suter family here in Wisconsin. Yep. Yep. So there is uh, a little bit there. Um, the one thing I would like to see them do is sign uh, uh, Jackson Lacombe. I think he'll be a good addition as far as defensively for them. Yeah. And Nick Sorensen. Um, they should sign him as well. But yeah. Swords, it's played for the Ducks already. It's just not panned out. Right. He went in 2016-2017, uh, played five games, played in the uh, American Hockey League, and then went to Le Coping, um Hockey Club in Sweden. Um, in that point, 
uh, you, uh, you kind of know where he sits, so I would right. be surprised to see him not do so, but Sorensen would be a good pickup for them to try and fix it again. Um, Matthew uh, Berkovic, who is also, tw- they have some 25 year old prospects. Matthew Berkovic is uh, from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, he played for the Gamblers and is currently playing. He is currently in the military. So, uh, oh, thank you for your service. Yes. Uh, he is, uh, he is a, he is playing college hockey for U- the army U S military Academy after playing in, in juniors. So he is 25 years old. Uh, he played for Team Wisconsin. He played in a Schwabenon High. Um, he, he has done okay in college. Um, he was drafted in the fifth round in 2014. I think that he's probably best off in the E at best. But get your college education, kid, and thank you for your service. Yes. Um, I always say that that was more important. That's why I went and, and didn't play pro or, or didn't go pro and, and then try and work my way up that way. So with that being said, the Ducks do have the third overall pick. Um, Buffalo had the uh, 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 first and Seattle had second. Seattle will probably be one of the last breakdowns we do because we're giving them time to build Team. Yeah. Um, with that being said, uh, I think one of the things the Ducks do have to worry about going forward is the expansion draft because, I mean, you're looking at I'm looking at this roster, and one of the things I'm seeing is you do have to leave some guys out there who have this, so you could lose a guy like Ricard Raquel or right. you know Troy Terry. Or something like that, where you're losing a piece of your team that you're not really interested in losing. Right. You know, um, one of, some of the things that they already lost, just this already, is they did lose, like I said, Ryan Miller. The other thing is they did trade away Ben Hunt. They did pick up Alexander Volkov. Volkov's a good young talent. Yeah. And a uh, very physical style of hockey. Um, but then again, now you have to re-sign him. You right, you do. For him, and you have to re-sign him. One of the things is you gave up Antonio Moran. And Antonio Moran is 22 years old. And a very young, not so, I wouldn't say a fully gifted, but he kind of reminds me of Rashard. Yeah, a little bit. You know, um, and, and with that being said, I, I think that they have some stuff there to fix. Now, signing Getzlav is probably your top priority, but with him being 36 years old, um, he would be the oldest player on the roster. Right. Um, with the exception of Ryan Kessler, which, if I'm you, Ryan Kessler, I'm retiring. Right. So that's my personal opinion. But, like I said, my personal opinion. Up next, uh, the next video we will be doing, I don't have much for the Ducks. It's kind of sad. Does it get well, I mean... Good? They did start in 93. Do you remember? You remember was he a bear, their goaltender? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, we've been doing that with our, our Yeah, videos. we've been doing that. They've retired Solani's number, Korea's number. Um, Nobody will ever forget that, though, when uh, uh, Paul, Paul Correa was playing for the Ducks and got creamed by Scott Stevens, came back in the game with an obvious concussion and won in yeah. the shootout. Yeah, one of the scariest hits I've ever seen in, you know. Up till the Jake Evans hit. Right. That one was just, 
I don't think I'd ever seen anything like that. I mean, me personally, I'm not going to lie. The Ducks were my favorite team when I was a kid. And then yeah, the Avalanche I, came into the league, and I lived in Colorado, and came the Avalanche. And, yeah, from there on since. But, yeah, I was a Ducks fan way back in 93. Personally, I like the Mighty Ducks better than the Ducks. I like their old logo a lot better than me what too. they currently have. Uh, the duck with a webbed foot is a little bit, it, it makes sense, at least. Yes, it does. It does make sense, but, and I know that Disney... To the older generation of hockey, though, they'll always be the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> All righty, with that being said... Ew. Well, that didn't work out at all. Um, over the last few years, they have been trading to get um, a little bit younger. Right. Um, what? what the heck is going on? All right, the 2023... Ah, okay, so when they traded for Alexander Volkov, um, one of the things they did is they, they traded away a conditional um, seventh if Columbus would pick up um, uh, the uh, Ducks 2023 pick, it would be transferred to 2024. Nothing that it directly affects this season. Right. The Ducks did also trade away Yanni Hockenpah to six for next year for Hayden Flurry. Now, Hayden Flurry, as far as career goes, um, he's kind of, it's kind of one of those weird ones where he was right. like seventh overall. He, he played. And for the checkers was going back and forth between the WHL and the checkers and it's just um, then he played one whole year and every year with the Hurricanes I don't think he I just don't think he fit that system no I don't think so either and when he went to Anaheim for the 12 games I mean he had more points in 12 games than he had in 35 games this year we with Carolina. So obviously that's the case. Right. Um, so with that being said, I think that he still has some upside. Um, as far as us, we're going to give you a little bit of uh, uh, backstory as far as what we know about the Ducks. One of my favorite players, and, and uh, I legit cried when he retired, was Timo Solani. Um, Timo Solani, uh, the Finnish Flash, he is a hockey legend. Yep. Um, he's like Yager in a way. <laughs> we never thought the day would come. <laughs> Yager's still playing for crying out loud. Yep. Um, also, like growing up, you know, with the Ducks movies. I mean, I own a Ducks movie <laughs> D5 jersey for crying out loud. Right. <laughs> you know, um, one of the things is uh, we love the game and you know, the Mighty Ducks may have been not the rep best representation of Pee Wee hockey. Right. It's just not. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, as a Pee Wee hockey player, when I saw that, I'm like, I wish my coach would do that. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't work at all. When we were playing as kids, you had every kid and their mother was trying the triple D. No, I was trying the knuckle puck. Huh? I was... Well, the knuckle fuck. <laughs> but see, then at the same time, I mean, it's funny because you'd have guys doing it and they'd get up close to you and try it. Oh, you yeah. know, oh, poke check, poke check. Right. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, it was just one of those areas that everybody and their mother, or they try to do the Dwayne Robinson where they're batting the puck around during the game. Or right. It's just like, oh. Uh, 
this did not help at all. Right. I mean, it was great for me because I was a goalie. So, I mean, I just had to go out <laughs> and stop the puck. But it is what it is. Right. Um, but the Ducks, if anything needs to change about the Ducks, they need a new arena. Yeah. Uh, the Honda, the Honda, what is that? The Honda Center. Honda Center. Needs either a huge facelift or just a new arena. Um, it's it's an eyesore to the Anaheim community because they haven't maintained it well. Right. And all the years of the sand and storms and all the earthquakes and everything have just eroded that building horribly. It doesn't look right. like it looked when it first was built in the Mighty Ducks movies. Arrow, Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim. I remember that. And Anaheim was a very big place for 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 Disney movies in the nineties. We also had what was that? Angels in the Outfield. And Angels in the End Zone. Yep, we're all filmed in Anaheim. Yeah. I mean, and then Airbud was filmed in Seattle. So I mean, all those things are like a outside of Seattle, just outside of Seattle. But all those things, they play into each other. And it's very important that we keep the, the uh, basis of hockey and, and, and keep it going because right. the Ducks in the position they're in, all right? So with that being said, with the Ducks, in the position they are in, they are picking third, and we kind of do a little bit of like a draft, kind of see where we're at, kind of thing. Yeah, but I mean, looking at it. From at least the easy perspective of, of the game, um, obviously, you, we're, we're talking, uh, we're, sorry, we're, gonna go there. Yeah. we're talking, all right, we're talking, you know, um, All right, I, I might be a little better, but this is this is giving you All right, so in that case, you're looking at Brent Brent Clark, defenseman. Um, I I honestly I have Matthew Brainer going number one overall to Buffalo because with them talking about trading Eichel, they're going to want that center back. Right. And they need defense, so they're going to probably trade him to a team that's going to give them a star defenseman. Yeah. And I mean star. He's ready to go. Norris Trophy could be handed to him the next day. if, if he Yeah. Um, so with that, that's what they're going to want. Um, and, and then you have to have the cap space to take on that as well. So. Right, you do. Um, with that being said, uh, you, you, you're looking at um, William Eklund or Brent Clark, Owen Power, uh, Mason McTavish, or Jasper Wallstead. Now, if I'm the Ducks and looking at what their main issue is, it is goal scoring. They're right. defensively good. They need help on the outside. So when you're looking at this draft, one of the things I'm looking at and have been looking at for quite some time, and and I know he slid a bit. Who's top point getter in this draft? Top point getter is... 
left winger Matthew Cor Coronado, Chicago Steel U.S. Hockey League. Uh, 85 points in 51 games. Nice. Yeah. I mean, uh, Zachary LaHue La La for the Halifax Moosehead, he had 39. He's a very good puck, puck handling, and he'll pass you the puck and put it right out, you know. Yeah. His seam passes and stuff like that. So you, you got your options there. Um, the other thing I, I'm going to say is if you are going to go a defenseman, um, Brent Clark and Owen Power, uh, if you're going to be willing to wait for them. Right. Right. If you're not and you're content and you want offense, offense is easier to coach than defense. Right. That is why defensemen and goalies take so long to develop. Jasper Wallstad is one of the top goalies in this draft. The other top goalie in this draft is one of my favorites as far as all the scouting I've done. And the reason why, his name is Sebastian Kosa. He's from Canada. But listen to this. He is 18 years old, okay? So at 18 years old, you're still growing. Yeah, you are. You grow till you're 21 as a man. This man is 6'6", six, six, uh, 12. And he's a net minder. Right. That takes up a good chunk of the net. Yes, it does. Last year for the Edmonton Oil Kings, and well, this year for the WHL, WHL, and the 19 games that the WHL did play, he was 17 1 and 1 with a 1.57 goals against average and a 0 0.941 save percentage. That's just insane. It is. And, and, and I mean, you're you're talking about, you know, going forward, and and eventually we have to kind of make the just you have to make the decision what direction are we going? Are we in full on rebuild? You know, right. Solani's gone. All of the years of the 05 Cup, that's all gone. <laughs> yeah, which the 05 Cup was really cool to see. The Ducks get theirs. Um, Nashville, well, we're still waiting on her. <laughs> but um, you know uh, we're working towards it and, 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 and all that stuff is going on but you kind of have to look at it with Perry gone and, and with Silverberg and, and, and everybody getting into their 30s and they're hitting their prime right. I mean, you've got decisions to make are you rebuilding or are you going to win now or are you going to build around are you going to keep the veterans around and build around it with young and, and older talent what are you going to do? Uh, they're in a rock and a hard place. I can't tell them what to do because I don't know. Right. I'm not a GM. I'm not a no. GM. I can sit here and play armchair GM all day, but uh, right. who's to say anything works? So, that being said, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm getting a vote. Oh, there we got John Wodowski. Hope you guys enjoyed our video, and we will see you again on Friday when we rank these uh, reverse retro jerseys. And yep. then we'll see you again on Monday. Oh, by the way, if you're in the Milwaukee area or anywhere around in the state of Wisconsin, come up to Slinger Speedway Sunday while TNT Racing, uh, sponsored by from Milwaukee to Nashville. Me and John will be there. Then we're going to go watch them shoot off some fireworks and have some good old races. Yep. So, uh, Go out and uh, help uh, see us, uh, our sponsor, uh, what we sponsor, do what they do uh, best, and uh, we will see you guys later.